The next run I would like to do is to run without the rainfall on grid. So we'll set that to be zero. So we'll only be using the one hectare catchment area that we saw in the head wall. Now if we'd like to include that drainage model again, we'd have to fill in this optional field here for the model. So I did a middle mouse click in that field. And now I'm going to pick and middle mouse accept the drainage culvert. And you'll see that that drainage model is now included. I'm now going to update my defaults. So we'll write that out and finish so that the next time I bring up the panel, it will have that setting in there as well. So we're all ready to run this again. We'll select Run. And up comes our two flow panel. And you'll see once again, we're seeing the head wall. But you might be noticed, head wall water level, how much faster two flow is running. The reason is, is without the rainfall on grid, the only wet cells are the ones in near the head wall and downstream where the water comes out. Because the upstream cells are dry, two flow is running much faster. If we look down here, of course, we see our progress bar. And over here in the bottom left, we get an indication of how much longer it will take to finish this, pro this two flow run. So we only have a few more seconds to go. We'll just let that finish up. And you'll notice, of course, that the water level was going up and then it's slowly draining out through our culvert. Now that it's finished running, we'll come back and we'll read our results again. And we'll go select that road flow 25 minute, read results again. And as usual, it switches us back to the uh, default mode where we see the depth and the, sorry, the water level and the depths. So selecting the enter key, that shows that there. I'm going to hide that output window for the moment. Come up to my toggle button and go toggle on my tin contours for depths. So this time, because we don't have the rainfall on grid, there's no water up in this section. The only water we have is the water that's ponding up at the head wall entrance and backing up, of course, coming out of the other end, and then, of course, flowing down to the edge. Let's go take a look at that, look at that in the 3D perspective. And here, once again, you see the water coming in. It's just somewhat deeper in the area. We'll talk about why it's a little bit deeper there in a moment. And you can see where the water comes out and spills down. Now, we're at 421 time step. If I was to back up a little bit, you'd see I'd be at 70 minutes. Now, our storm was a 25-minute storm, which has its peak at about 15 minutes. If I wanted to see the results at about 15 minutes, what I would come back and do is set the time step. Let's go back to approximately time step 120. And that would tell us that's at 19 minutes. Let's go to time step 100. And you see we're getting close to the 15. So we'll just back up just a little bit. And actually, it gets a little bit deeper at the end. So that's where we're very close to our maximum depth. In a moment, we'll take a look at how we can observe the maximum depths. But now what we're seeing is the water, once again, is backing up. And then it's coming out of the head wall and flowing down here. Once again, at, at this state, we're only seeing the water levels that are deeper than 2 millimeters.